Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Ninja DC joining again for another podcast discussion. This time, focusing on our ranking of Hello Boss season one episodes and also the epilogue, uh, the pilot, because it exists. And also, we are down one episode from season one because we don't know why. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, join me. Join me. Sorry, go ahead. Is, uh, second in day. Hi, everybody. Day lover uh, here, the sweet. Well, and tomorrow is my birthday. Woo! Happy, Happy birthday. birthday to my day, to my day, to my day. <laughs> Happy birthday to my day. Mwah, 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 mwah. So on my birthday oh, is going to be the second day as well there. A uh, very, very <laughs> birthday today, today. Yes. Happy oh, birthday today, today. I don't know the worst of the lyrics. <laughs> mm-hmm. That makes it so much easier to sing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you got a point there. Oh, shit. And I'm here too. <clears throat> Give a moment or two for the angry young man with his foot in his mouth and his heart in his hand. He's been stabbed in the back. He's been misunderstood. It's a comfort to know his intentions are good. And he sits in his room with a lock on the door with his maps and his medals laid out on the floor. And he likes to be known as the angry young man. Wow. Thank you, Billy Joel. (laughs) Not that angry, I hope. (laughs) Oh, I, well, it's my persona here. Oh. I haven't done any canonical change in that yet, so I'm still stuck with it. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess next up, uh, Jen. I may be first, I may be last. I may have finally completed Twilight Princess and I have no hair left on my head. But I am first and always Jen. Hello. Welcome on this Monday, Monday evening. Do this podcast. Okay. Then, uh, <laughs> Carlos. Uh, here, cracky, cracky, cracky. <laughs> all right. Christ. He's here with us, but he can't just speak right now. But yeah, Gunmetal Gator is here. Um, He's just invisible. You can't really hear him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can hold his. You can hold your babies over this one. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Dark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dark. Uh, who, wants go with, who wants to go with what they've been up to? Media wise or focused? Mm-hmm. It'll probably be a short one here. Mm-hmm. By necessity. But yeah, we were watching the Steeler game where, uh, yeah, all factors in full display. The uh, Bengals being the classic Bengals. Yeah, they're. Uh, High expectations coming off their AFC championship game amounted to pretty much the standard, if you know, the Bengals and the Steelers with their new rebuilding era and their quarterback who there, who won the, uh, tentatively won the quarterback race over the summer doing not much, like just enough to win the game with, yeah, even less help from his running backs and, yeah. Mistakes galore and head slapping. I can't believe you people are letting this slip through your fingers galore. And uh, end result being that both teams should probably not get their hopes too high this season. But the Steelers technically won. So Day and I here have bragging rights over Jen and DC over there. Ah! Uh, yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, wait. Them, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Wave them towels if you must. Enjoy it for now. But you are a terrible <laughs> towel. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, a, a terrible towel. Oh, hey. So, yeah, the Browns towels. probably are uh, licking their lips and smiling at both of us right now. But that aside, uh, <laughs> been checking out, yeah, what there is to see on Paramount Plus, like planes, trains, and automobiles, and His Girl Friday, which, uh, Yeah, His Girl Friday is like the second romantic movie I've seen in black and white to make me wonder if we've really come so far in the last hundred-ish years, or if the insecure dickheads just took over the narrative at some point. Uh (laughs) Like, His Girl Friday is about, uh, yeah, it's the newspaper boss who doesn't like that his ex is getting remarried and connives a bunch of shenanigans to delay it, or it turns out that there's no-nonsense gal actually never intended to leave him. She, yeah, just wanted to show him how serious she was about being fed up with his 
BS, even if she would not admit that to herself. And yeah, sounds like uh, how dem women think sort of thing. But here's the difference. His Girl Friday opens with the acknowledgement that this is a ridiculous fantasy about when newspaper, uh, uh, yeah, newspapers and getting the stories counted <laughs> as justifying anything short of murder and that this is not actually how real people think and even opens with once upon a time. Like, wow. our stories about this made 50 years later and up taking this more seriously. <laughs> so, but yeah, all good fun. Yes, indeed. And I've been watching House of Dragons. <laughs> Only up to episode three. I've what not seen the new one yet. What you think of it? All right. Uh, All right. That's good. I think, I think like, okay, if you love Game of Thrones, you're going to love this. But I will warn about uh, episode one. Okay. Uh, there is a scene where even I had to look away. Me? And I'm not squeamish, so. Not. I know. Well, not with that. He thinks I know what you're talking about. Was it the very first opening opening scene? Uh, no. Never mind. Then. Okay. Also, Cobra Kai has me hanging on its every word by the second episode, and She Hulk is not bad. Interested in seeing where it's going. Interested and uh, yeah, make it watching it make people whine and moan over. Uh, meaningless end credit scenes and stuff and <clears throat> that apparently made them forget that Dr. Eric, what's his name from Thor, running around naked because science and totally not because naked joke was also a thing. But anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I haven't seen House of Dragon yet, but it's on my to-do list. I just eventually want to get around to it. I'm actually, I can't remember if I read either the summary or just had, like, the audiobook of the actual, like, short, like, now, Bella that actually covered that story, um, that particular Targaryen feud. Uh, yeah, it's gonna get uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. The wait and see how that goes. Um, actually, I have HBO anyway, so it's like I really don't have excuse, but. Uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, we just yeah. saw. All right, there's uh, a new uh, undisputed champion right now of the world, which was the former cruiserweight champion of the world. Which, if you know, the boxing scene is really like a face palm from where we were a year ago. But, uh, new champion! Hurrah, hurrah! Yay! Mm. Well, speaking about Rawr. champions, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I you win, Gator? Rawr. No. Aww. Uh, I was going to transition <laughs> it over to a certain subject uh, uh, from like what I usually uh, spiel Rawr. about for like uh, animes that we used to watch as kids, but most of us Rawr. left. Um, like Pokemon Journeys decided to yeah. actually redeem itself yeah. after Ooh. many, many yeah. bad episodes, including two recap episodes let me explain to you there's gonna be a recap episode after next week's episode oh boy i'm just telling you right now this might be worse than unova league in terms of like some of the drought of episodes there are i have not i have not seen any new pokemon since uh what was it uh <sighs> I don't remember what it was called, but it was made out of fire red. That's the last one I've seen. Well, uh, that's generation three in terms um, of like, I don't remember what it was called. It was good though. Uh, uh, in terms for like the anime, it feels like we really like run the well dry in terms of like, hey, this is a concept that you guys could excel at. Well, you guys barely have a budget for it. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Basically, like, have a week hiatus 
follow this up with a recap episode of all the focus episodes, then go for an unrelated episode that does not involve the main character in the Masters 8 tournament, and then go back into the arc, basically creating nearly a month gap of episodes for like a, the biggest tournament arc of your franchise right now. Imagine doing that twice. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the fact that some of the and most of the tournament episodes weren't really that good either, featuring a lot of one-shot moves, Okoing like a lot of a lot of Pokemon instead of like the usual deliberate long strategies of the Pokemon anime. It's it's kind of like hell right now for a lot of us here. But <laughs> there's this oasis at the end here. And it's not even Ash versus Leon because everyone knows how bad the setup is for that because of like how badly it shows Leon as being like the untouchable champion. But Ash versus Cynthia, the first female champion, the queen of Sinnoh, is living up to the hopes and dreams of everyone who has been waiting for over 10 years. Ooh. It's so beautiful. It's her game accurate king, a uh, game accurate team barring Lucario. And it's just the best. Like she starts out with Spiritomb, and this um. Spiritomb literally takes out half of Ash's Pokemon, takes oh, out wow. his Dragonite, takes out his Gengar, and even Twin knocked out his own Pikachu. And the last minute okay. gap that you wow. mean Destiny. That sounds Bond. really stupid. How dare they? Uh, using Destiny Bond to literally Oko. What Stop Cynthia thinks is Ash's ace. Wow. Like, legitimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She uses strategies of constantly switching out, trying to weaken Ash's Pokemon with different team members before going back to, like, a Spirit Tomb to basically kill off the Pokemon. And it's like, what? oh my god, this is like game strat. First week might be a decent 8 out of 10. This week's episode, on the other hand, oh my god, the remainder of Ash's Pokemon here. A Surfetch wow. and a Draco Vish wow. legitimately saved his wow. behind. First Draco Fish being like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and like uh, confront against Garchomp, the biggest terrifying champion Pokemon of any champion ever, because seriously, Garchomp is literally a legendary killer. And Ow. but then also, I don't know that this is, you said this was this week's episode. Maybe we should save the spoilers. Yeah. Oh, uh, and also uh, it was uh, called, oh, it's I'm called the uh, Pokemon Origins. I'm sorry. No, it's Pokemon uh, Journeys. Not, not, we're well, not like, talking about Pokemon I haven't Origins. Seen anything <laughs> mm-hmm. after? <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, right now, like, uh, like, but like, basically for like this week, basically like, like this, like, um, like Draco Fish, basically like the fish dragon thing, after like uh trying to deal with Garchomp. And then Garchomp is like, oh, I'm just going to sub Stealth Rocks and make your life a little hell. And boom! Entry hazard. Being wow. very tough to deal with. So then, like, uh, Dracovish has to, like, contend with, like, a switch out for, like, uh, for, like, Milotic, which then tries to do the same strat that basically killed off, like, uh, Iris from, like, the Masters 8 tournament, the Unova champion. Warning spoilers, then, people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, the spoiler machine needs to be turned off now. All we right, do have I'll, I'll a topic that many people are probably going to be saying, get to it already. All right, all right, all right. Then, all right, all right. I have no idea what's going on. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I guess aside from that, like, just move on to, like, another topic here. Um, There's been, like, um, I was able to watch, like, uh, the newest adaptation for, like, a fighting game for like anime by the name of Tekken Bloodlines. Play, yeah. Yes. Ooh. Which takes its uh game inspiration from Tekken 3. Which you would wonder, why not take it from the first game? Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing about Tekken 3. Tekken acts sort of like the fighting game equivalent of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. In which bloodlines are all the more important. In which the first game focuses on the Tekken 3's protagonist's father. Tekken 2 technically has the former villain be the protagonist. Tekken mm-hmm. 3. The main protagonist of the first game, Sun, 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's the the JoJo JoJo factor. Yeah, it's all about the. Oh, is it Kazuya? Is it Kazuma or is it Kazuya? Okay, okay. For Tekken three, it's Jin actually. Oh, I'm Jin? just trying to the last name the last name and everything just. Mishima. 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 Oh, uh, Mishima. From Mishima family. Mishima. And then you have Heihachi. And then you have Heihachi. Heihachi, yes. Heihachi, Heihachi Mishima. World's worst yeah. grandfather. And then you have World's Jun- worst father and world's and worst Jun- son. Yes. <laughs> Jun Mishima? Is that what it is? Jun? No, yeah. no, no, no. Jun Kazama. Jun- oh, yeah, that's right. That's where they I got changed it their from. last name. They that's changed their last it. name. Because that's there. where I got it from. That's where I got it from. Jun Kazama. Okay. Yeah, so basically, like, June is basically, like, uh, uh, loses his mother over, like, a, an apocalyptic threat by the name of Ogre, who's, like, he being behemoth, who only fights against strong foes, and was after June, but his mother sacrifices herself to, like, uh, get June away. Right, gotcha. And then, like, her last words to him was literally, like, to get stronger, go to your grandfather, go to the Mishima conglomerate, look up. Hachi. <laughs> and then that sounds like a great idea, right, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> great idea, dude. The worst grandfather in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Am, gonna... the logic makes perfect sense when you are dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember these Ooh. games were made like in the nineties, like the first three oh, games. Don't remind mm-hmm. me. And you cannot lo- unlock a code on your Sega so you can get the blood onto that as well. No. That's not so combat. Yes, you mm-hmm. mean we're done back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> those, yeah. are some, those are some fun times. I never won a Tekken game in my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so, yeah. me, and, me and my brother completed the whole um, old Mortal Kombat from the 90s area mm-hmm. together uh, and i i can uh, recently uh, well not recently but when i was still living in my apartment mm-hmm. i uh, completed Mortal combat x nice yes don't you just love don't you just just don't you just love the fatalities don't you just love how yeah. better and better and more and and more detailed with time yeah and that my that was, but it, like after I had my episode with like, oh, I'm not going to have anything violent anymore. I just stopped playing. But it was right after I completed all of it, so it was like, ah, don't need it anymore. Well, speaking of fatalities, that might be a good segue. <laughs> uh, I always want to go over about. my things quickly in the news, which there ain't very much. Um, but yeah, what I've been up to is I can't remember if I mentioned last time, but yeah, I finally finished Xenoblade Chronicles, which, uh, like as of now, which I haven't finished all like the special hero quest, I have 78 hours I put into it. Um, oh wow, wow, so yeah, that was a very good game. Honestly, re- yeah, it's a really good game. Um, that really refined a lot of the stuff from the series, like just the way this quests are done. The way the whole group is always together and all that. It's it's a very <clears throat> it's a very nice I it's a very good RPG. Um I would say better than two, but I'd sort of like the style of two more if it makes sense. Because two mm-hmm. is very stylized. Um but three is sort of more grounded like one, but still like sort of in between. And it definitely is more combat and similar to two. But yeah, overall great game and then uh, let me see, anime stuff I've been up to and all that. I think I've just started watching some of that Godzilla anime, Singular Point. Ah. Which, is entry, like, which is good, but I wouldn't say it's probably great. Um, that has a lot of haters, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems to be sort of going for like a, it's sort of weird from at least to the third one, where it's going like a more grounded Godzilla, but also not. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Everything's more real, except for this. The exceptions we make is like, okay, it's you're making it so weirder. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. I, I couldn't, even, can't even believe there's another freaking Godzilla. Yeah, oh, this is, I mean, it's, this it's, is it tries TV. to go, if I understand correctly, hard sci fi with yeah, monster battles, but like not dragging that, like no WWE monsters, just like how they would actually quote unquote actually struggle. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, it's. I, I would say it's a good anime so far, but I still have three more episodes. But it's like, it's just sort of a weird tone, like I said, where it's like in between like, like a realistic take and also a not very realistic take. It's like the exception you make to make the world work is just, yeah. But yeah, I would say it's so far good. Just, but the one thing yeah, I will say, the CGI for the monsters is not the best. Not the worst, but not the best. Um, so then. Uh, and then, like, just to quickly go over the news, there ain't really much news this time because a lot <clears> of things are basically are pre-news stuff. Like, Net Tomorrow is apparently a Nintendo Direct, which very strong yeah. rumors point to finally getting that Twilight Princess and... Uh, uh, when Wind Waker uh, remake on a Switch are like <laughs> announced, uh, um, strong rumors for that. So yeah, I'm finally happy to finally have that. Which, uh, which is like yeah, I just finally got the. It was like oh, time to get back to my PlayStation. He's like oh, Nintendo, here's this thing you've been waiting for. It's like dang it. Uh, but little yeah, um, click yeah, that's the room. Sorry, go ahead. I was saying, like, that Nintendo announcement is probably tomorrow, and then um, rumored this month is also, like, a PlayStation uh, event to go over stuff. Um, <clears throat> well, they also not uh, related to what I've been up to. I was saying, uh, part of the reason this react uh, this podcast is delayed so much is you yeah, actually finally got a job, so I threw, it out, threw up my schedule slightly. So, yeah, that's – should have put this at the beginning, but, yeah, like, that's sort of the reason for the delay. But uh, the only Woo! other really news what? thing is, um, the only other news thing that's big is sort of sad news, but sort of something we have always like the Queen of England has finally passed away. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. It's literally a hollow but story. It, it, do you wanna do you not wanna know a coincidence? What's a coincidence? So do you know the actress that's playing um, uh, what's it called in English? The a lady of the house speaking. Oh, Hyacinth. Uh, yeah. Yeah, an old British sitcom that was pretty funny, I guess. Yeah. So she th- she died a uh, a day before this. Oh wow. But, before the Queen, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, she has a uh, like a running joke in her series about holding the uh, most extravagant tea parties. For everybody. Yeah, even though and, she's of like relatively low birth, like in the yeah. in keeping with the British obsession with status, because she managed to marry into some money, she always has to carry herself like she's the cream of the crop, and refuses to admit that her last name is Bucket, claiming it's mm-hmm. pronounced Bouquet, yeah. <laughs> and her family always says, uh, "A oh, hyacinth's coming over today." Well, I wasn't expecting a royal visit. Yeah. And uh, I just were like, oh, so she's holding that tea party for the real queen now. Yeah. Uh, ah. <laughs> but uh, one of my uh, yeah, one that... of my uh, what's that? The uh, teacher's father was a nice. Uh, what's that thing to think about? <laughs> that that was cute. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of cute. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sort of sad news. Not media related, but yeah, it's sort of like hard not to mention that. Oh, totally. Um, the one thing, everywhere. The one thing I'm mm-hmm. interested in is like, I have a feeling because of Charles is now the king. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling the uh, the authority and what power the royals have is going to be greatly diminished in the next couple of years. Um, oh, and, possible. Well, because they they, they technically yeah. UK technically has some power. Like the queen could dismiss mm-hmm. Parliament and all that. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What like it wasn't much, but it was still a, like an executive like advising position and all that. I have a feeling under Charles that's going to be greatly diminished. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Because he, he's someone that's generally like not liked by pretty much anyone. Uh, well, here's yeah. that. Yeah. The thing is, is that there are those who. You know, I can't find, I can't think, I can, I can definitely think the reasons why he wouldn't be liked. But then there are legitimately, I think there are those who who will, who ha, who did turn out for, to shake his hand and every and, and such. You know, so I, you know, it it could be, you know, those those that uh, those that do, then those that don't. So. Mm-hmm. 
And all we, and we all yeah, know like, the reasons why some don't, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like sort of a wait and see how the UK does it. Because like, yeah, they technically, like I said, the Queen the royal family technically does have a lot more, some authority. But it's like, it's basically yeah. because Parliament lets them still have it. Um, so it's like, yeah, I'll be curious if George starts to bar sort of get some bad tabloid stuff. And it's like, yeah, let's uh, take away the executive position more. But yeah, besides that, I guess let's move on to the actual uh, main thing, which is our ranking Ooh. of uh, have a boss. Um, and I, yeah. I guess I'll leave it over a second because you created the uh, the list. <laughs> the scorecard, as it were. Well, all right, let's get right into it here. Uh, starting with last place up, I have our uh, I asked everybody for how they placed this episode. I asked everybody to give it a grade. I asked everybody to do that for every episode, but. Uh, yeah, we uh, had some minds changing, scores late and scores early, and uh, the bottom half of the list was still taking shape pretty late, and uh, last place ended up being a real split decision uh, surprise. It's episode three, Spring Breakers, about uh, Blitz fighting over a parking space with his ex- uh, the succubus lady and her gang of succubuses looking forward to spring break and all the sex they're going to be having. <laughs> yeah, and Blitz's challenge to, uh, yeah, screw more people than he and his crew can kill as part of his business. And I don't know why it's in last. Uh, that's a really fun premise that it's uh, played for a lot of fun. They ride out for a lot of fun, I would have to say. No pun intended, ride out. All I can say is that uh, the people here who seem to think as I do, I mean, generally, uh, you know, it wasn't any of our favorites. There are Hell of a Boss is a pretty strong series, and it seemed like it finished just low enough on our cards for the uh, non-believers to uh, drag it down into last place. So... I can only turn it over to Day Lover and Gunmetal Gator here to explain what the hell, man. <laughs> All right. Explain yourself. All right. I, I, I can ease. I can easily say this right now. Okay, go get I it. have this literally as my last place episode. I live personally. I also have this literally as the only D tier ranked episode because. <laughs> It just feels really? like it's an episode that, like, really, with a premise like this and it trying to develop Luna, I mean, while to showcase her as, like, as someone just, like, not being, like, a comfortable, like, a girl who can really open up socially to, like, others of, like, her kind or others, like, around, like, the same age or maybe even a little bit older, because, like, she's at first a bit starstruck then it's just being a bit hobby struck and then really is trying to like uh, spread her social light rings which she doesn't really have any and then also this is the episode that showcases like her human disguise which is sort of like a bit of a downgrade for me like literal downgrade in my opinion so the joke and... where they're all like all those people in the real world who would fetishize you and they all turn to the camera <laughs> oh, that joke is always going to be the best part of the episode. And it applies like, to you, does it? Yes. I, I mean, right now, I mean, like, right now, I mean, like, Luna is just, like, my favorite aesthetically. Does not mean she's my favorite character outright. That's really it. <laughs> because, like, I was always in love with, like, Vizzy Pops, like, uh, wolf designs a lot right. of the time. Like, her original breakout star wolf are, like, a uh, for like her music video is legitimately like my favorite, probably like my favorite Disney character, honestly. That's kind of like why like that character design like holds a lot of representations. Like, at least there is one busy pop wolf that's in an actual animated format. <laughs> We're not. That's like actually not being blocked out by copyright. <laughs> it's really like right. a big thing but yeah but yeah it's just like All I right. just feel like yeah, the way they did the whole plot was not really good like trying to split up like the whole Luna developing plot and also Luna and Lizzo <laughs> plot it just felt like more like an introduction of that concept more than anything 
Not Gator the fell all the way down the Luna rabbit hole of, oh, wait, do I like that? <laughs> I yeah, it like, this a bit, is my own. bit to me. The part, but uh, but uh, actually, took a lot speaking out of, of it. Which, uh, yeah, speaking of which, I was just curious. Um, I went to Google and I uh, went to rule34.com and Google Woo! search Luna. And yet, in terms of how much he's fetishized, there's 4,863 yep. images. Oh, I'm surprised well, there's not it's, more. It's, it's, that's my reaction. Like, huh, I thought there would at least be, well, I mean, it's close <laughs> to 5,000, but I thought it would be way well over it. Well, uh, well the, the reason why I have it that low is a, is an easy one. I don't like, uh, what is that, um, the X. I don't like her, and I don't oh, like the... Yeah, Veresica, I don't... Are you supposed to? No, but... Uh, yeah, she I'm, a, I'm she just is like, sympathetic. Uh, um, I just kind of thought she was what she was. She was entertaining and evil. neither bad nor good, just someone who you believe would be in a fight with Blitz. Sure, sure. Like, well, I like that thing... at, with the fight and all. I just don't like her personality and also the... What's that... Um, whole our deal with with all of this and i also like the the luna crush was not necessary i don't get well whatever and um mm -hmm. also there it was, was a spring I break not relationship done. episode i am i know i'm interrupting you to be a jerk just please go, continue we just go on <laughs> I don't know, that was all. I, okay else we are not going to get anywhere because no no can a, were you fit we're taking longer doing this now continue <laughs> okay and, and then there was also the the last part with like oh uh so the rivalry re or just ended because like they have this common <laughs> thing now and i was just like well you're supposed to fight <laughs> all of the sudden <laughs> Like, I was just like, what? Oh, how they team up on the whale and then blackmail them over yeah, that for the I, parking spot. I was just like, wait. And then I, I don't think, maybe it was because I didn't find it funny. But, yeah, I I just put it down there. Oh, hey, so uh, it was just, yeah, and eh, whatever, I wasn't feeling this that much, I guess. Not amused. Uh, I, just, I just feel like it was like an introduction conflict and I was not and enthused with the violence at the end either only catharsis is really like the the amazing like clip and uh clip in the at the beginning and then also uh the ending in which like being like a uh, like roscoe being like salty and like uh blitz just being like being a ham about the win that's really the only mm -hmm. good thing about the episode in my opinion <laughs> everything mm -hmm. else didn't really feel like a very consequential except for a bit of the backstory for like why the relationship did not pan out well for Verasica's mm -hmm. end because yeah yeah even though you don't like Verasica they mm -hmm. I could sympathize with her a bit considering like it's very much <laughs> to, like, use up true. use up their finances yeah. for like personal stuff and it didn't really seem to be prompted by anything except for maybe self-destructive tendencies that get revealed later down the road. But that's really the thing. Okay, that's so... One thing is, uh, yeah, that's is interesting. Like, yeah, she's very clearly displayed as a... Oh, I'll just be direct, say, sort of a bitch. Um, but at the same time, she's not really villainized. She's more or less the victim of a lot of the Blitzo stuff. Um <laughs> Yeah. Just, like weird just kind of, I mean, she's almost like what you'd think a uh, sexed up rock star would be like. That's uh, kind of her character. And yeah, that, uh, I don't know. I think she brings line. heat to the rivalry, as it were. Yeah. The problem with me is, like, I, I think that she might be lying about some of the stuff. And Blitz is just taking it because, like, they were once married and had <laughs> fun times. I don't know. <laughs> I see overthinking it is a common theme in the Maybe. naysayers of this episode. Maybe. <laughs> okay. No. And maybe I'm just being salty. But anyway, yes, yes. we haven't heard from Jin yet, and she uh, 
as this is a polarizing one, I think it would be a crime to skip people. So <laughs> you have anything to say here? Oh my God, I finally finished Twilight Princess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jen, go. So there you have it. <sighs> I just, I've, I've been dying to get that off my chest and out into the void of the internet. Uh, it only took me about a few months and a hundred plus hours to do. <laughs> I think oh, it was like four months to say. say. I lost count around 120 or 130 hours. Mm -hmm. But it took you, me. Yeah, you, uh, you can <laughs> come back when you're used like five years of your life on the game. <laughs> <laughs> it took oh, me like my. months to do that. It took me like months to do that. I'm like, that's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> But anyway, I am oh, up for, but anyway, save it up. I'm gonna save up so I can do it all over again in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Yay! Huh. I'm gonna have no more hair by the time the year's over, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Next time we see Jen, yeah. she's going to be bold. Between the Bengals and these video games. God. Okay. okay, so that's how much Jen cares about the Spring Broken episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, oh, yeah, and about about that, I don't know, Luna, I'm not, I am a crazy person who is not exactly sold on Luna yet. I'm not sold on Luna, on Luna yet. That's why, that's why it's easy, so, it's so easy for me to not talk about this. Other than Bruce, I'm I can talk about that a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to, like, the next two or so episodes, I think, in season two. Uh, like, the trailers and all that, it looks like Luna is going to have an episode or two. So it'll be interesting to see how our character develops. Right. Um, oh yeah, I'm I'm sit, I'm I'm ready for it. I'll, I'll be like sitting back, be like, well, entertain me, make me understand why, make me understand why I should care about this dog. <laughs> make make me understand why I should care about Luna. So yeah, and it does seem like they've been heading towards a lot with uh, her and Blitz's dynamic as a. Uh, adopted father and daughter as it were so, so weird so I'm like what the heck? i'm like i with that kind of dynamic it's like what the heck's going on here but oh well i think it's just a, i think it's just a case of just gotta just gotta well blitz through uh uh hell of a boss again which i will be more than happy to do and to see if i can maybe get understand it understand it better or something oh yeah by the way not by the way not sold on not sold on luna not yet <laughs> not yet anyway who knows give me time We'll yeah, so I, next I'll up on the uh, list, though, mm -hmm. seems like a good time to jump to that. Mm -hmm. Or does anybody have any last minute thoughts they want to squeeze in there? I just finished one my princess! <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to the next episode up the list, the one that I thought was going to be in dead last until right here at the end, mm -hmm. five minutes before we started the podcast, managed to. Uh, yeah, squeak above spring broken with the exact same letter grade of B and uh, the, a ranking place exactly one point out of five votes, one point better, the episode right after The Cherubs. Ah. Heck yes, heck ah. yes, now we're talking. Oh, ah. yeah, and, the and uh, honestly, they both trend towards, like, yeah, nobody has... Uh, either episode above fourth place. Uh, at least one person does have both episodes in last place. Uh, like I said, one point that, yeah, Jen liked this one a little better. Uh, Gator, obviously, he liked it better than his last place. Uh, and Daylover liked it a little better, but even they are not over the moon about it. And being as the one, who, uh, being the one who thought this episode should place last, and ranked it in last, if I may, uh, I think that yeah, this episode's mistake was taking the hell of a boss formula, which is well, approach even formula is almost a degrading term these days, but uh, derisive as it were. Uh, I think it was a mistake to take the mix of yeah, like mean-spirited edge but also yeah combined with yeah heart and feeling it's almost like yeah a dark chocolate caramel as it were like the dark is there and it's yeah rebellious and fun and really gives it an edge but uh yeah there's some sweet in there too you're supposed to care about what these people are feeling 
in this mean world and you're supposed to care about the fact that they make progress and cherub almost felt like it was paying dues trying to go like pure mean spirited trying to hold the suite at arm's length though and like no we're totally a show with an edge this we're getting it in here and like as opposed to something like i don't know homer simpson's enemy where it's like yeah week after week of a fine dessert somebody uh uh threw a pitch black dark chocolate bonbon in there which is like Ooh. yeah woo combine yeah combined with all the other ones that's a variety that gets your attention that's a like this just plays like yeah somebody dumped too much salt into the mix and it's uh i don't know it feels like kind of a bummer it feels like it's it feels kind of obligatory like i said like it's paying its dues it uh yeah feels like it just it is yeah actively almost trying to be not fun like it's in messing with its own formula that yeah undermines what allowing itself to have even at the at the meanest of times a little bit of heart did it just yeah feels like it's not that fun. it feels like it's taking away some of what you were counting on there but that could have been okay if in the, all right, let's go pure mean spirited because the mean is a part of this too. It had found uh, some targets that really deserve to be hit. Like, you know, something that you know, really does deserve the mean treatment a little bit. But instead we get the same old like, hey, nature is not hippie pretty rainbows. Hey, Santa Claus is grown men plus children. Hey. Old men don't get love because ew and sex and ew. like the one thing that uh the one arrow that I thought it maybe had something with was at the very very end where the higher up angels come out with their smug like full of crap smiles and their uh yeah up their own backsides chastising like these cherubs who were doing nothing but trying to help the whole time get kicked out of heaven forever which if i'm not mistaken is actually something that the bible says if you sin in heaven you can still be kicked out of heaven heaven is in no way a one-way ticket it is that judgmental um yeah non-forgiveness in the bible but by then i'm already so far gone i just like whatever i kind of want to see these yeah smug ass higher up angels get punched and that's not going to happen because the episode is almost over so yeah i think it was kind of a bummer but i guess if we're going to turn it over to the closest thing it has to defenders that would be day lover and jen and with his vocalness maybe gator as well uh do any of you ladies want to start first or do you want me I to well like i it sounded like gator had the most enthusiastic yeah for this uh, which is uh, yeah. funny because he does not have it ranked the highest of the three but go ahead all right <laughs> well let me just talk to you about the cherubs and how interesting 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 a lot of background details in the episode kind of hint at the whole hierarchy of heaven all at the same time like 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 that you don't notice like while it just tries to be a simple comedy of errors episode it's literally quite the it's literally quite like a whole yeah heaven is literally like like one of those like um how should i say it um totalitarian states basically and like uh it just only like uh provides like a aid to like the most wealthiest of wealthiest people like the fact that like the cherubs were said to help like a man who clearly was only trying to make a machine that was only meant to help the riches of the rich and no one else like kind of shows like oh heaven's not really the good person's place no 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 this is where like the people who were well off in life just go there and then just hide it in window dressing as like, oh, this is the heavenly place that you want to go to. If you go to heaven, you'll be saved. And when you go there, it's like, oh, oh, it just feels like actual life again. But now you're under constant threat of like, 
oh, if you do something wrong, then boom, you're kicked out of like the heavenly place and set up to like the worship place. Just... The gator fell all the way down his world building rabbit hole again. <laughs> world building. That's the, that's it doesn't the matter about the episode. Doesn't matter about the reviews. It's all there. And like, like you even get hints of it from like even from like the other thing of Vizzy Pop, like a has been ho- has been hotel. So, yeah, just like the whole deconstruction of like uh, heaven, just being like the 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 good guys, you know, just because you know, just trying to take a step away from all that, you know, <laughs> uh, just cynical worldview. He fell down. Again. He fell down the rat. He fell down. That's the second wormhole you've fallen down into, Gator. Yeah. I mean, aside from that, I mean, I'm also a big. Um, oh, I forget his name. Um, Horace fan. I'm a big Horace fan of the oh. episode. I just find him very cute. Gotcha. Love, Love them cherubs. Him. Yeah, like Cletus. Who cares about him? It's just like a Cupid baby, but without the Cupidness. <laughs> I really care about the girl a pack of one which I don't really know her dearly but my favorite my favorite angel has to be uh, <clears throat> Vizzy Pop's insert character angel the, the Delf just comes in with the no 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 <laughs> like seriously that will always repeat in my head of like condescension done so sickeningly sweet. Oh, yeah. It's just all right. And then also we get a lot of awesome costumes for the imps as well, like Drag Queen Blitz, Drag Queen Moxie, also the the, the Moxie Millie duo as, like, furry animals. <laughs> it's all <What>? more precious. <laughs> like, hey, here's some relationship goals. Go be that for Halloween. There you go. Whatever, I do have a goal. Party you going for. I do have a goal of one day somehow, if I can get somebody to, to do Moxie, Moxie, I'd love to dress up as Millie if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a Moxie for you. Sure. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Okay. Oh yeah, and Jen <laughs> gave this episode the highest grade, so I feel like she should get a turn two here. Okay. Well, I gave it. I gave it a high grade because I love the premise. Because I love the premise of the idea of like of uh, kind of a uh, of angels not exactly being the pure of light and beautiful beings you see in paintings and media and everything. If you want to get into uh, <laughs> if you want to get into like actual like biblical like depictions of it, uh, they're scary looking. And especially if you and if you want any more video game references, look, just look at the Bayonetta series. Oh my gosh, everything's scary. Mm-hmm. Over design, over designed, uh, over designed for one thing, but just heaven and hell scary. But either way, I love the idea of like of the premise of like you know angels not exactly being pure of heart, and in this case, in this their attitudes, the the attitudes of the cherubs, you know, um, you're always for me. I was like, I was like, okay, I know what exactly what they're gonna do with these characters, but I love the premise that they're showing, and I feel like that needs to be. You know, that needs to be shown more. I'm like, oh, you think angels, pure, pure, iridescent, beautiful beings. No. Scary. Shady. All right. So some people really get into the idea of, uh, yeah, taking down angels themselves, a peg. Yeah. And uh, and, and, and uh, Hell of a Boss is one of the, Vizzy Pop and Hell of a, Hell of a Boss is like one of the perfect. The perfect entities to do such a thing. Yeah, which I get, and I mean, I know mean spirited. It's like on some level, it's like what show did I think I was watching? But right. like I said, it felt like it was just paying its dues a bit, just dragging the same old <laughs> oh, Santa Claus's grown men and kids or something out of the closet and like just yeah. Yeah, trying to. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just demonstrating of like what it does of what it does best. I mean, you of what it does best. Well, that's that's not what it does best. That's what everybody does. The you know, right. hey, internet teenager talking points, pseudo edge stuff like edge lords. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I mean, like uninspired edge lords. Because I mean, ah. I've said the Santa Claus thing three times now, but I mean that's been done to death, revived and done to death again. It's so old. 
That is true. It's still a fun, but either way, it's still a fun premise to to explore and funny and funny and mean spirit all the way all the way too. Show yeah. it to show it to your conservative relatives. See how much. <laughs> see yeah. all, see all the lols. See how many lols you get. <laughs> In any case, though, it, yeah, it's the lowest rated episode on IMDb, and uh, despite these moderately enthusiastic defenses, it did come out on as the second lowest rated among us as well. Yeah, the real only drawback to this episode, it's definitely not a, a plot for a central episode, for no. sure. Yeah, this is, it's a, just, this is a very filler episode. Yes. Yeah, or, or set up for season two or three, depending on what you think. Yeah. Because that's really what this episode is. <laughs> that's the only reason why I couldn't rate it any higher. It could be a good setup for maybe the cherubs to come back. But yeah. It could but be potentially what... interesting, but I hope they do it a different way. I kind of like Hell of a Boss's approach of like, yeah, the mean stuff is like, yeah. hey, this mean world we live in, yeah. Yeah, isn't that a bitch dealing with that and like i don't know this is the only episode that reeks a little bit of just douche to me yeah but hell of a boss what you expect uh well like i said the only episode in the series that like where it instead of i'm like whoa mean-spirited and fun and like this is the only one where i get the scent of douche more so <laughs> I mean, not like in the characters, because of course Blitz is a douche. I mean, like in the writing. Oh, gotcha. So yeah, but okay, now we're going more towards the uh, honestly uh, mixed ones in the group. Like it was uh, a real toss up on the next few. In fact, so much so that this next episode actually uh, is higher on more of our lists than the ones ranked above it, but straight up got a lower letter grade, which I, yeah, sorry, I made in my rule ranking that, okay, a straight up higher, lower letter grade cannot outrank a higher one, so it's a technicality, but good old episode one, Murder Family. Yeah! Mm. I don't know, like this one... (laughs) Gator, yeah, Gator is the lowest vote on this one again. He has it in second to last. Jen is the highest one, and she has it in straight up second, and the rest of us are somewhere in between, but uh, lower in between, I will say, which is probably why it still came out towards the bottom end of the list. This one sure opens with a, an attention-getting bang. Like, this is mm-hmm. high on the shock value, and I think why, at least for me, some other episodes worked better is because, like, yeah, it's, um, I think something like Spring Breakers, for instance, or Spring Broken, Spring Breakers is a movie, mm-hmm. gelled it a little bit better. Like, I think this one got, like, okay, it's shocks and it's character bits. Like, they didn't, like, it, yeah, it was more meant to make an impact this first time out. I don't, I think that other episodes would have them gel together and, like, play off each other a little bit more and a little bit better. But then again, watching it again, it's even a little better than I remembered. Like, I didn't change my ranking too much because I think, like, that initial um, disconnect of just, like, the shock of everything you're seeing, this cannibal family, this, yeah, vengeful, um, just pitch black, bitter, sour motivation for this lady to want this to happen. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, yeah, that, of course, part of why... It's the rewatch value is strong with this one is because that wears off a little bit. But I mean, much like you can't degrade a show or a movie too much because you already know the best twists. So like, oh, they didn't hit me as hard this time. Like, no shit, Sherlock. I don't think yeah. you, I also don't think you should raise an episode because something that made it maybe not work as well the first time, maybe kept it at an arm's length from you has worn off like that's still there. But then again, like, I mean, Moxie's arc here and like the, the way it ends mean spirited with him is something I can dig a little bit more like a, a combination of a well-deserved shot at the cops and a well-deserved uh, ode to how trying to do the right thing in the world can go so very, very unrewarded. Like that's great. The action is actually really strong here. Like, yeah, 
sequence. I mean, the Millie versus Buff dude, that's a well done action sequence of yeah, speed versus strength. And especially that scene where, uh, yeah, cheating lady is hunting blitz like that actually hat is drenched in atmosphere. That is a like tense little scene, like where she's given that speech about how she can make his pain go away. Like, ugh, there are no, okay, maybe cherubs, but there are no weak um, hell of a boss episodes. Like, yeah, I just want to add, like, that's one remind me, like, this episode, I wouldn't say as some of the, it doesn't, it's sort of lacking in the comedy and let's say sort of character drama. It's not really the best in characterization. Dark but comedy, yeah. It really does, but it has really, like, you brought up, yeah, the action is actually some of the best of the season. It gets better animated later, but, like, in terms of just, like, sort of the, like, um, oh, what's the word I remember? Like, just sort of, like, the pacing and just sort of, like, these um stylization and all that like it is actually very some of the best like fighting in this series mm-hmm. um it gets more like i said more complex and animation styles and very stylized later which we we'll probably get the future episodes we're going to talk about um but like it's like in terms still one of the best choreographed like fights um so yeah that was actually an underrated part of this episode i would say you're here and uh yeah okay i guess gator is our down votes like you know wanted it to be towards this lower half of the list so take the floor away oh crocodile oh right. crocodile indeed so right now this episode the reason why i want it so down so much is to show that this has first episode syndrome and i'm very glad it's very near to the bottom because that just means a lot of the episodes was better than the first one that came out. Which, thankfully, um, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, this episode like, was a good introduction for like a for more centralized, focused narrative instead of like what the pilot did being a shotgun approach. Uh, having it focus on Moxie's like a bit insecurity about like trying to do the dirty deed to like a a, a more general good term being family like. You usually don't go after family. It's just like, you usually just want to be like, go after the one target. That's really it. But oh, what if you have to put down the family? Oh, no. And then this episode just does everything it can to subvert that trope. And even then, Moxie still does not uh, bow down to like to like to the world's depravity and such. And basically like tries to be as moral as possible, even though the world still ends up just getting rid of the family in the way it does now. It sure does sure. know how. But all in all, like the big highlights were literally like the introduction of like the episode, including like a like the person setting up the kill to begin with. And then Stolas's whole uh, coercion in the forest. Sure. Those were the big highlights. Oh, and the fire scene, like all the build up for that, where, yeah, this is so ritualistic and symbolic and burning flame. Ah, so it's, like, yeah, it's just not how it works. Yeah, we're infernal beings. You think yeah. fire would do anything to us? <laughs> and then on the other side of the list, the one who wanted this episode to be ranked much higher, let's hear it from Jen. Wow! Okay. It. Uh- Oh no, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh no, lost my train of thought. Um, shoot, what were they gonna say? Station nothing us. Oh, oh my goodness, lost, lost in space. Murderous cannibal families, Moxie and oh, his. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'll save Millie. Oh, thank, thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> the old woman here. <clears throat> But yes, I enjoyed, I definitely enjoyed Murder Family because of the twist of it all. Um, it really just solidified, you know, the uh, the cast of like, who they are and just their, and just their antics, just their antics and what they do and what they do and such. And again, the twist of it, the twist of it, that, that, that was shocking. That was such a shocking. Devil. I love a good twist. Mm-hmm. That the family is a bunch of cannibals, or that exactly. Moxie's attempt to do right by them gets them blown up by the police. Yep, <laughs> yep. And I was like, "Whoa, you really did that? That's pretty cool." But like I said, I love a good twist. 
Yeah, I agree. Boy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it certainly had the twists. There's a lot of shock here. Like, even if I thought, though, it like it seemed like it wanted to make a statement more right. than like, okay, make a make an impact first and engage you later, which is, I guess, why I don't connect with this or didn't connect with this one quite so much. I mean, I'm having second thoughts, and they'd be second thoughts about my rankings if the ones above them weren't still so strong. Uh-huh. But on that note, I guess, uh, yeah. Does anybody want to get any last second thing in before we move on to fifth place? Nope. I'm good here. I, fifth I place? Did, I, just, I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, like this episode's like, um, like deranged thing with the family was the thing that I was yeah. just like, eh. I mean, it has good mood setting and everything, but I'm not really a fan of that, so that's the other real big reason why it's so down low. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has their preference. Yeah. And now we move to fifth place, the good old pilot. Ah. Now, this one, uh, let me see. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, it seems like it actually sparks some pretty polarized reactions here, and I mean... Um, well, modestly polarized. It's, uh, I actually think the, uh, the last episode had a, uh, wider spread from first to last, but, uh, here it's, yeah, well and truly all over the board. I think, mm, well, it's both more and less polarized, I'll put it that way. But yeah, and, uh, I think a lot of people take pilot, uh, yeah, I think it has pilot syndrome, the one where you have to sit through the building up and the setting up qualities that I think often go underrated because I think a lot of people forget how much of the things they love about the characters and it, not just the qualities and theories, but the actual moments that made whatever it is about the characters that lovable, that gave you something that lovable come from pilots. Mm-hmm. I especially have to point that out about myself because... I have this episode at down the lowest of all ah. in seventh place. I thought it very much was yeah, talking at us and stuff. Or I did until, uh, yeah, about the third or fourth. Man, I think you guys underrated that pilot from in hindsight from our fearless leader, Ninja DC here. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I went back and watched it again and had to admit it was better than I remembered. Mm. It was the, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Vizzy Pop's weakest quality might be uh, her introduction skills, like uh, Has Been Hotel, for example. It basically starts three times before it actually gets going. And uh, yeah, Has Been Hotel, like that episode has gotten better for me at going and rewatching it after I fell for hell of a boss. This one, uh, yeah, I felt like it was talking at me a lot, the what we they actually do, what we're supposed to be taking away from this. Like, I mean, it, I don't know, I, like, heck, the demonstration of why it even matters this mu- that much goes by fast. So I, curiously, it, its weakest quality might be the actual introducing or at least plot wise, but yeah, the character dynamics laid out here, the, um, shit, this episode re- like lets itself breathe a little bit and lets you take in like, yeah, you know, uh, Millie's sweetness, Moxie's incredulousness, Blitzo's absurdity. And uh, yeah, the spying and stalking them. That's actually taken in stride by Millie and Moxie's love for Millie. Yeah. And Luna's yeah. Gruff grouchiness with the uh, trying to hold stole, uh, Blitzo at a distance when Blitz on the flip side is like yeah, cooing over her just I mean the dynamics constantly play out it's like shuffling cards by a quick handed dealer the conversations they're having how they get that out that's fun the uh, kid and like there's in spite of all the mean spiritedness like the montage that is Blitzo's ad with the uh, but, oh, yeah. rebelliousness is strong. We'll kill your husband, do your knife. As yet, Millie stabbing a couple that was in the middle of a 69 before she 
<laughs> got there like <laughs> wow they know how to get you with an image but, yeah, uh, yes, and in spite of that yeah for all that the heart is still not absent like the fact that they hit this kid and spend half the episode and th like they the episode never says it out loud which i think was a good decision but they spend the episode straight up trying to save the kid's life regretting what they've done and it's only after he goes full little snot yeah dickhead at the end that they like that we it flips to the joy and hey we get to kill him after all <laughs> i mean so it's actually well woven like i had murder family that is episode one ahead of this one and after i finished rewatching them both per dc's recommendation i wasn't sure which one i liked better anymore and that's taking into account that murder family was better than i remembered so but i've talked long enough why don't i just turn it over to the guy himself this Our episode fearless leader. yeah like I feel like this episode is necessarily not the strongest in terms of my characters and just because it's very self-contained, even though it's like sort of pilot, it's sort of not the starting point of the series because it, yeah, it is a pilot, not the for episode one. So it's sort of like just sort of pitching everything. So just behind that nature, it's character development and all that isn't as good as later. However, like it's a very punchy episode in terms of comedy. Like it does not really stop. And it's like very good pacing, which I think makes sense because I think it's one of the shorter episodes isn't it yes yeah, 10 minutes 10 minutes long <laughs> so it's like sort of more punchy pacing than like the uh later episodes yeah i i also gotta give like the pilot credit for like at least surprising uh me and probably a lot of people out of nowhere with the whole moxie millie actually being a couple like because like if you didn't know that beforehand the, the the episode kind of like drops you like with that knowledge like all of a sudden after you were assuming like eh, these are just two generic amps it's not like they're gonna have any sort of interpersonal relationships or anything like that maybe we might be able to ship them or anything wait they're a married couple already what the heck and they're so yeah. cute with each other oh my gosh uh, a non-toxic depiction of marriage who knew eggs and with demon imps how about that yeah, uh, I mean, and then the pilot was also like the best showcase right now for like Luna, like in terms of like uh, showing like her sassiness and her characterization. Well, I mean, then again, it was the pilot. It really did show off like the best of her qualities. But yeah, it's a really, it's a really good episode, especially for like, uh, for all the Blitz stuff, because um, let me just tell you, I was a fan of Brandon Rogers before this, and it was very awkward being like, whoa, I know where this is going with that voice actor. That's that's the Zim back, the voice actor, right? No, that, that Zim voice actor is Richard Horvitz, Moxie. Oh. I'm talking about Blitz. Oh, because wrong. Like, Sorry, my bad. Yeah, Blitz is like, um, his... His VA is literally like one of the most crass like uh, YouTubers I've ever seen, and he does everything in such a tasteful way with like having multiple characters in which he acts them out himself. That I'm just like, I'm just gonna have that as my main lead. Okay, how many layers does this character have? Because if you're bringing him on as your main character, then this guy has to have a lot of layers, and thankfully it was proven correct. They cast it imperfectly. Yeah, eventually, they deliver on that in a big, big way. Totally. Oh, yeah, yeah, because Blitz is like, you can't just simply describe him as like one thing, really. He's like a multifaceted character that you would wish to have for your own series and just be like, do you find him sympathetic? Do you find him like like the intellectuals view Rick from Rick and Morty? Or do you see him as like someone that could be easily broken down as two simple terms of like worthless, like has been, anything like that sort? It, it, like uh -huh. really, you could you can't really just say that about him because like right. he has too much stuff going on with him. Right. It's hard to it's hard to to, to I guess get a pin on Blitz. I mean, I am not I'm I'm in the middle. 
I'm not sympathetic towards him yet, but I'm still, but I'm, and I'm keeping an open, but I'm keeping an open mind, but I'm keeping an open mind to be like, okay, I'm, I, I'm not ready to put a pin in this yet, but I'm waiting to, you know, show me, show me what, show me what, what, what happens, and then I can decide whether I, whether I can sympathetic, be sympathized or not, you know. So it's still, Blitz is like, uh, I don't know, Blitz is still in that kind of shady character blank slate for me but still fun still fun to watch though still fun to watch and some of the and some of the just the lines some of these says are like are like just basically flat out hilarious (laughs) like when there's one where he he gets knocked out and gets up he's like oh you daddy (laughs) it's it's quite funny um but yeah it's um it's a it's in the middle yet but it's in the middle honestly really much like this episode which uh (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure, like, that murder family, like I said, not sure anymore. I don't know if I'd necessarily want them to slide higher up the list. Like, I would hold the mediocre introductory stuff against it, at least how it hit me the first time still. But, yeah, like, geez, I think the moral is quickly becoming not that, yeah, the pilot isn't really good. It's that there are really no bad episodes of Hell of a Boss. Mm-hmm. That's true. They're all pretty darn good. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I guess we should uh, move on though to fourth place. Unlucky number four. Which one yeah. got the fourth spot? And uh. Yeah, that is uh, also the latest episode we've talked about so far. It Give it up for Harvest Moon Festival. Yay! Meeting Millie's family, who does not think that Moxie is manly enough. <laughs> not even, and especially, in fact, especially not after he enters the manliness contest. Yes. With the mysterious new snakely assassin dude. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, most of us have this. The majority of us have this in the top three. Uh, only one person has it outside the top four, Ooh. and uh, makes a lot of sense in some way. This episode certainly stepped it up in terms of uh, things happening, like a a loaded <laughs> uh, premise where yeah, where things had to come to a head in a way. Lots of yeah, mm-hmm. action and competition in one sense or another. Yes. Blitz versus this assassin dude. I think, yeah, they were worthy competitors to each other. And then, yeah, and they play against uh, how we're still not so sure about Blitz and his relationship with Stolas. Like, back in the pilot we were just talking about, he was downplaying that hard. He made it sound like he slept with Stolas as an attempt to get him to give him the... uh, which of the MacGuffin book. But uh yeah, when in fact Blitz, it turns out, decided to do that of his own volition when uh Yeah. He realized he was on the cusp of hurting Stolas' feelings pretty bad versus making his dreams come true. But um yeah, here though, he agrees to assassinate Stolas only for Moxie to show up and for Blitz to say that, yeah, he was just, yeah, keeping his cards hidden and planning to betray this assassin dude the whole time. Right. So. Was that the one, was that, the one that the wife was hiring to try and kill him? Yep. We still haven't ah, seen a I follow-up think. to that, even though, yes, yeah, season two's first episode makes it look like we might just pretty soon. Gotcha. But, uh... Um, sorry, day lovers, scooching back over and lift this up so we don't get too much reverb noise. But uh, yeah, honestly, I was yeah, I saw this episode. I thought, okay, what a nice step up, and uh, I was still thinking that in my voting. But like, there's some stuff that doesn't quite go down so smooth. And I remember even our in our original react, I was uh, yeah, talking down to some things in it. And I have at least been 
forced to consider whether I let its surface appeal up my vote a little bit by our uh, single low vote, and boy is it a pointed one from Ninja DC, who Ooh. has this in dead last with a D ranking Ooh. rating. Okay, okay yeah, no, no, that's a surprise. Ooh, like, yeah. Especially for Norman read this episode. I mean, well, c- come on! <laughs> the main issue is like, I just really felt like the, the boyfriend must prove himself. But it's, it's really just like the boyfriend must prove himself to the parents trope, and usually in a Western setting. Like I said the second, like this feels like a worse version of like that Futurama episode. Um, mm. And like I don't, I I just hate that core plot point too much, and and also like how they basically said, oh, we're gonna t- make a twist for like the like you expect us to have where he proves himself as being a bass, but the twist is he doesn't. It's like. That's not really good writing. That's just sort of like, uh, what's the word? it's basically what they try to do with um I forget uh, with the Star Wars uh, sequels. Where it's like I'm going to twist expectations. It's like that doesn't make what you've written good. <laughs> well, if I could say something, yeah, uh, head on with that. Like the Futurama episode, it it very much takes the like you said you don't like the proving yourself to the parents trope, right? Yeah. You do not. Especially okay. when, it's, when, when it's, especially when it's played so straight like it is with this episode. Like, well, the thing the about that is... This epi- yeah, the biggest twist is like, oh, he doesn't really prove himself. He, like, sort of stands up to himself, but he doesn't really prove himself. Well, yeah, I mean, the Futurama, it, it pretty much takes the approach of, yeah, triumph of the, the meek and the everyman who you're probably going to like in that case, yeah, see as your uh, self insert a little bit. Like, yeah, the macho man there is Zap Bran again, the br- the biggest screw up in the history of screw ups. And uh, here it's someone who does have all of those abilities and such and such. And uh, where, like, I mean, on one hand, the whole okay, Moxie's, uh, yeah. You have things you do well, too. I mean, like, on one hand, that thing is that he can use a gun. It's still his ability to assert his dominance over someone else on some level. But, like, in spite of that, I think the uh, yeah, the moral being that yeah, him not proving himself, I think this episode might have been grasping at, and in some ways, like, yeah, reaching for and in, on some level grasping uh, like, higher-level moral on how he sh- doesn't really need to, how he shouldn't really have to. Like, when he tells off Millie's parents at the end, like, yeah, his message is, like, okay, our relationship does not need this thing you're constantly, yeah, pressuring us to have it. We are not hurting for it. Millie has all the, yeah, brawn and yeah machismo we could need and here you're talking down to her for yeah not having enough of it when she did exactly zilch wrong Mm. so i mean he'd like yeah basically the message is okay if at least what i would take from that on some level is okay if you're going to insist on this not i'm going to prove myself to you but then we don't need you. Mm-hmm. Which, and, I mean, I don't know, I think Hell of a Boss, with its, I mean, I, I, well, first of all, I will say, in spite of all I've said about the mean-spiritedness, like, okay, yeah, do not, for one second, think you're kidding anybody. Hell of a Boss has a big, bleeding heart in its chest. And, I think it's, like, smartly uh, avoided being too on the nose, like, only in the moments where things absolutely come to a head Does it is it's saying its morals, yeah, straight and loud and clear and, yeah, anything like that. 
But yeah, I think here, I think there is some quiet subversion going on that I would be tentatively in favor of, and maybe even especially in the fact that Moxie, Moxie does not, like, that the problem is not solved by, oh, Moxie proves that he has the ability to assert dominance and be macho after all, even though, as the episode points out, he kind of does. <laughs> Day Lover is waving her finger at me here, so I was waiting for someone to take it from there anyway. Well, uh, I think, like, I can see the relations to Kiff and Amy from Futurama. That's what I get for the Futurama episode. That's the episode he's talking about, too, yeah? Well, you said Sap, so... Well, like, random. when Amy, get, Amy gets captured, her family says, Oh, yes, yeah, we yeah, finally yeah. have... Well, now we have a real man's man to rescue yeah, her. Yeah, Zap Branigan. There's, there's, <clears throat> a, there's, a, there's a couple of other episodes that I'm thinking about where, like, um, Kif is, like, <laughs> this the sad excuse of of everything, and not even a man like at least uh moxie has uh the ability to like um take it in himself but i also voted a little high because like uh the relationship he uh gets with um the boss himself and also like um the the new guy with like the guns and first you're like oh this is going to be nice with this new character, and of course he's evil. He has the evil eyes and the evil mustache and everything. No, just kidding. <laughs> but it's just like I, it's just like it says itself, and it's just I think it's funny with like the even he's even good at singing. Like Moxie is just like oh here we go. The song yeah. for no reason has song. Moxie go. Yeah. I can't remember if I've said this word already, so I'll keep it PG-13. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Moxie go blank yourself for no reason is in the song. You said it before, so I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so You have yeah. to bleep it yourself out there. Um, well, if we've said it once, it's still PG-13, so no more. Okay. Fine. Right. But I can see, like, what you're saying, DC, with, like, it looking like uh our episodes but i don't think so i've seen our episodes looking like our episodes before but i always see a episode with like new eyes so how to say that and even though it looks like the others i think like this had a little bit better um what is that called like rhythm or like pacing pacing yeah i mean on one For hand me, like I agree with you in that I think it's a uh, it's attempt to maybe remix the moral with Moxie into something less toxic is a uh, a way I would say I would credit it for being different. Um, I think I circled this before without directly saying this, but there is sort of a downside here in that it spends a lot of time dumping on Moxie, and I think he had as this. DC, it sounds like this is part of his problem too. A lot of time dumping on Moxie with a payoff of very little, very limited triumph for yeah. him. Like there is, yeah. But we don't need that. We have Millie for that. Well, I mean, like, no, I mean, like, the, as far <laughs> as all it puts us through, with like, not mm. only does the the predictable happen when he enters the manliness competition, but oh, it, even, like it even it even like, me. yeah picks up that well yeah what about yeah, like we all have things we can do well it even like gets to that moral early so it can flip that on its head and punch moxie in the gut with that as well with yeah. oh assassin guy is also a good singer mm -hmm. like it, it puts us through a lot on his behalf in exchange mm -hmm. for yeah very a uh, little reward where he's concerned but he still gets some yeah. it's not I feel more for uh, Moxie than I do for Kiff in the uh, well, future. Drama. That's uh, for sure. I, um, I, yeah, I, did, I hate to sort of rush along, but yeah, we have like what, three more episodes to go. All right, so that's what that is. It's uh, yeah, there might be some, yeah, and that might be why this episode 
despite being in the top half of the list, didn't place higher still, despite a lot of what it offers. But next up is, uh, yeah, one where I think its pros and cons are a little more cleanly written, Lululand, an episode that uh, I think was in second until, uh, yeah, the other guys in the group had a conversation with me, and it turned out kind of agreed more than they realized with my take on it and lowered their scores ever so slightly that yeah episode two lululand is a fantastic episode for stolas this is where we get to meet him proper and okay he's not just the horny rich guy we thought he was he's um like stated in a very uh yeah attention getting yet intelligently written like not not overplayed way that he is a darn good dad and he's yeah. even he's like a he's what he's trying to be yeah. yeah well i mean like in the face of a wife who really does not seem in like she's in this because she like the very first scene is uh both of them waking up oh, our daughter is crying uh you get up so right dad and guess what still counts as a subversion in 2022 is the one who goes to his daughter's room and takes the time to listen to what's wrong and right. sings her a lullaby and yeah 15 ish years later or 10 or whatever it was while mom is has no qualms about uh screaming at the top of her lungs and throwing things at her spouse in front of the child dad is still the one trying to give this girl some semblance of normalcy right? in all of that normalcy, a word made up by the third or fourth dumbest president we've ever had back in the 20s from nothing. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> is in some ways like straining to try to make her feel like she is a supported kid with a normal childhood, right. which is a very sensitive, very powerful dynamic i think and very not served by lululand itself which right in yeah all the time we spend there with them and especially with the hell of a boss crew seems like it wants to be oh how skeevy how unpleasant bathe in the uh stinging satire and uh lulls of oh watch this place burn instead seems to get stuck in just plain how skeevy and unpleasant like, I there's yeah, a, a, yeah the like way. a couple of lines that seemed like they were going for satire, but mainly it's just an amusement park that sucks and is really skeevy, and even Blitz burning the whole place down is almost a background note that doesn't doesn't end up being that much fun, if I remember right. Right. Yeah, I think the best way to summarize this episode, like even if you liked it, depending on rank, is like. The a, the main plot or the A plot is an S tier plot, but the side plot is just sort of B or B tier. Yeah, because uh, it basically introduces us to another one of uh, it, it's the first episode that introduces us to like uh, one of Blitz's uh, exes in the form of a robotic duplicate of one. Shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exes as it quote unquote because I mean. If I'm not mistaken, it's been pretty well confirmed now that that's his brother, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, very much so. Oh, his brother who's so. replaced his body parts with robotics a little bit, but uh, whatever the story is there. Uh, yeah, I just can't wait for the story to be that it was all foretold in the very first episode of season two. Shit. We are the legless horse theory. Ooh, yeah. I mean, it seems like there's a lot coming where that's concerned, and I mean, yeah, I'm looking my chops to get to that. But, uh, yeah, as is their confrontation, it just, like, I think later episodes should get the credit for what's retroactively interesting about that. Like, at the time, it was just, okay, this is someone from Blitz's past, and they don't like each other, and they have a fight. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Which is another th reason the whole burning the place down isn't that satisfying. Like, the fight takes up what focus we get on that, which is still not actually that much. I mean, come to think of it, I'm almost wondering if uh, 
if they want to save the mano a mano that went down at the end of that for a later episode because just sort of off screen blitz has presumably done something that made him the winner question mark that as he's saying worth it that clown had it coming even as he's all banged up and yeah and giving what focus it gave to mostly that there was no like oh cheap miserable lulu land is burning to the ground all the full of crap mascots are yeah have to run instead of yeah getting their kicks off all the scam uh carnival hucksters are now watching their profits go up in flames like now it's just sort of a by uh, mostly it's in the people are talking about it happening off screen <laughs> But yep. my point being that oh, I'm yeah, really sure. trying to justify pretty hard that I didn't quite give this one an S tier and only barely think it deserves to be in the top half of the episodes instead of how clearly it does, because man, is that stuff was stole as golden. <laughs> like that's some immaculate right. writing uh, there. I guess we should move on to the next episode. But the one thing I want to yeah, say about yeah. that Can is... Can I just warn a few more uh, seconds? No? Okay, fine. <laughs> Ozzy! <laughs> But uh, Second the one place. thing I want to say, uh, oh, yeah. well, the one thing I say is like one interesting thing comment I've had on YouTube about what it is like if you, you can actually sort of where Stolas is trying to explain his marriage to his daughter and just sort of stops. It's like if you watch like episode two, you can sort of fill in those blanks uh, now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's also really, uh, I don't know, it was really endearing to see Stolas kind of uh, fumbling to explain to his daughter, you know, why things are the way things are the way they are. Yeah, the, the show adults um, don't know everything about like what's going to happen well, in their lives or why things that lead to this way or can't really describe it. Right, which, or how to explain it in, in a way a teenager can that that it can reach a teenager pretty much. I bet any, yeah. and I bet every every parent has that has that uh, uh, conundrum. They have that They have that issue whenever the kids become that age. But, but it's Day Lover's first place episode, so I guess it didn't bother you all that much. Like uh, it being in second place? Oh, or what no, are you Lulu Land is your it's first place. A... Yes. But no, I think I see it taking second place. I like that. Yeah. That's it, good. It, it's not in second I like, place. I like Stolas. I like... Well, it's overall placing uh, here as third, but yeah, you were saying day. Yeah, it's third place. <laughs> third place. No, no yeah. that's okay, too. But the... So what won me over with the episode was uh, Stolas' song to his daughter. Like the sweet... Like, um, what's that? Yeah. Back look to when uh, she was younger to now... <laughs> Uh, and him like just trying to be a good dad and like Simi succeeding with the all of the things and stuff like that going on. So yeah, sure. I thought it was a it was a really beautiful uh, episode, especially as I said with the song, uh, beautiful imagery. Um, also a great look into Stolis's life, and mm-hmm. I really liked the daughter. So. Points there two for the long game we played with him flirting with Blitz. Oh, yeah, that's true. I need my bodyguard to confirm yeah. at the end that that's exactly all it was, that he could have wrecked all those guys trying to kidnap him. <laughs> like, yeah. That was funny, it too. It was yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, can you guys still hear me? All right, but, uh, yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah. Second oh, place, you dropped Ozzy. The... All right, go. The, uh... To date, the finale of season one and the only finale we're getting until they sort out whatever part two of this would have been. It's, uh, yeah, the episode where right after their greatest triumph, they blitz hits his greatest wall, his himself about how, yeah, his own worst enemy clinging to Millie and Moxie and uh, just, yeah, watching as all the things that are usually funny uh, bottom out and come crashing down on him and uh, leave this guy who yeah, could have it all and in some ways it's right in front of him uh, sobbing on the couch like he has nothing. Mm. Yep. Oi. 
Maybe the feel, surprisingly. Yeah. It's a little hard to say even much more than that. I mean, yeah, unless anybody else wants to try, it's Jen's I mean, favorite episode. Yep, okay. it's, the one, it's the one for some reason. I don't know what it is. For some reason, I keep coming back to that episode. That is the one that has stuck, that stuck out the most, I think, in my brain out of all the episodes. That one... That one just stuck out, stuck out the most, really. And I guess the way, mm-hmm. way it, it, the way it ended in it, and such, I'm like, oh well, that was a shock. Oh, huh, my bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, not only is it Jen's favorite, it's all, it's the rest of our second favorite. Everybody else picked second, mm-hmm. except for, in what I can only assume was payback mm-hmm. for uh, Jen putting, uh, giving seventh place to her first place episode, Dale Over has this one in dead last. Oh my okay. God. What, okay. what, what is, what is with the, the girls reason, here? The <laughs> reason, the reasons, the reasons, tears, the reasons. Uh, where should I put that? At the beginning. Well, first of all, like right now, nothing comes to mind. That's one point. Okay. about like no because like all of the other episodes I can say something about I like there's something that just stands out from it this is just like okay. <laughs> this is too harsh <laughs> the second is looking at me like I swallowed something I should, I should. I thought I was leaning over on one hand, just like <laughs> looking at you like nothing. Okay, well, yeah. Ah, exact point. <laughs> so, like, mm-hmm. so I guess, yeah, this relatively quiet episode was a little too quiet for her, is mm-hmm. all she can say. Ah. Yeah, uh, well, I think, yeah, on the surface, there's a lot going on here. There's Stolas and Blitz's dynamic. There's, uh. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, the fact that there is actually a pretty big triumph over uh, Ozzy's dismissive skeeviness to anything that's not hard sex, but the triumph is entirely Millie and Moxie's mm-hmm. and zero Stolas and Blitzes. But uh, yeah, Stolas, mm-hmm. I mean, it's another one that makes you score points for him that he really does just want this nice relationship with Blitz. And that's the true. fact is that Blitz is the problem. And he's not, and he's the problem in spite of himself because for the hints he gives that, yeah, he might be into this quote unquote deep down. He, yeah, instead he's obsessed with stalking Millie and Moxie because he feels like, yeah, he doesn't have enough. He reminds me of the quote by Groucho Marx any club that would have me as a member is not one that I want to be a part of. Mm, Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess it's also down there because like, so I like their building relation relationship and um, the boss actually trying, but um, I just think like it's a little too little too late. Like, yeah. Just didn't have that oomph with you. No. And Set aside when they were in the um, cafeteria area and and like this uh what's that evil guy that well it's his brother we found out later but mm-hmm. when the evil guys start to sing I was just like why do we need this this <laughs> is like a little bit too much salt on top of salt of the relationship that's already pure salt. Like, give them a, just a little chance, at least, for developing anything, if uh, even. But Okay. Uh, yeah. So, not I mean, quite universally, but it is a quiet episode of Deep Feels. And yeah. I'll let Gator have the last word on that. I just really feel like for this episode, like, um, it just feels like, uh, like the best musically like trying to combine my like, genuine like toned and then like sarcastic harsh like uh, rebuttals uh of all the way from like uh 
from like uh, Fizzaroli and then also uh, I forget the guy's name. Ah, uh, the uh, Osmodius, Osmodius. Osmodius. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Like, and how like they uh, echo like the cynical aspect of like uh, this because like you're down like in the dregs does not mean it should uh, should mean like uh, you shouldn't care about like uh, what sort of type of feelings you really have. Just go out at each other and not give a give a, give a butt about it, you know. Just stuff about that, like uh, just showing like how like how much of like an uh, like an oddity like the relationship could really be, and like it makes you think. What about other relationships that we see? And is there just some sort of like sense of like not caring that people have for like still being together, you know? Mm-hmm. Say Millie's parents or something like that, or maybe it's just only for like the higher up demons and then just the centers in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, not universally, but a quiet episode with a lot to take from it, it would seem. Mm-hmm. Yes. And with that in mind, we're mm-hmm. coming up on uh yeah, first place and the uh yeah, hard line cutoff point we drew for ourselves. So it's uh what can we say it's action packed it's emotional it's long and may- wastes not half a second it is first place on 3 out of 5 of our cards and only much lower than that on one of them we have less than 5 minutes everybody let us gush about truth seekers as hard as we possibly can go wow we oh. all had oh S's my goodness it's amazing Besides Jen! No, what the heck, Jen? No, no time for that. Even Jen likes it well enough. Gushing. All right, all right. So basically, Luna with the whole like uh, team fighting thing, or like uh, the whole action scene, and then you basically. I know, right? They're team up with Millie, like using yeah the small one to get into the vents and stuff, right? Yeah. The amazing Uh, thing, like cutting people up into small pieces. The whole government organization just being called dwarfs with an H. It's just being like a ridiculous people just trying to cosplay Matrix the, characters. The yeah, amazing... Hunting demons, that's all they exist for, but they have all these government ninja weapons and high-tech stuff so we can get the coolest action scene ever with a blood explosion and the axe is t- chucked into heads in the bone. Oh, <laughs> and also the... What is that smoke? Hallucination... Uh, oh, oh yeah, amazing. that has to be honest. But, oh, and then like in before that too, where like they need to resort to that because not only Blitz but also Moxie are so good at trolling these guys. Yeah, and like yeah, making them like driving them nuts and almost reducing them to tears. And then like how to like even after the truth stuff, they don't like do that cliche like yeah, oh these characters are stupid, so they have to do the oh, how could you say that to me? No, they like catch on right away. They're like. Ah, that was oddly personal of me to say what's going on here. And then, and they get it, but it doesn't matter because it's still like, yeah, it's still what it is. They're like, it's that progresses so, so well that, yeah, they a force to be honest with each trouble. Each other is still a problem. And the, and one that kicks off like the hallucination sequence. Okay, and then the hallucination sequence is basically like both of their mind palaces and such, in which like they're talking to each other in the hazy mist of like them like getting uh getting through like their problem, or in Blitz's case, just basically delving deeper and deeper, spiraling out of control, like realizing how deplorable and sad their life really is with all these broken up and failed relationships and such, being dragged into the dirt, mud, and then seeing like his only way out might be just to be a shining slave to like uh, to this bird. In which he might have some like feelings for, but it just feels like it's just like deprecating like in his own pride as like being like a yeah. self righteous businessman as a man. I just love the imagery of like Moxie walking up to Arc Seven and then we see like it all tumbling down. I know it's so operatic, it's so grand, it's so like and then like after that how they go full quiet with that little conversation between Moxie and Blitz that says so much in such a short span of time and is like such a perfect triumph for them uh it just felt like a conclusion a conclusion to like this three episode arc about them you know like first episode fifth episode and now the sixth episode just concluding everything and making me feel like okay this is a good book end for moxie's issues 
Kind of fair, yeah. And I mean, it was genius to place this right before Ozzy's because it's very season finale-ish in its own way. And in another show, it might have been like just, mm -hmm. yeah, the um, the pure triumph of them and like, yeah, solving some of their uh, deepest interpersonal issues. Like it's a, it's a huge triumph so that the next episode can point out that, yeah, okay, despite what a good surface level triumph that is, the real issue here is what's deeper than that in Blitz on how he, in ways he might not be able to reverse, is his own worst enemy. But here, it's like for this shining 20 minutes, however long it is, we, okay, get mm -hmm. to see him, like, have the personal triumphs that he can still have, connect mm -hmm. with Moxie in this, yeah, very personal way, and, like, mm -hmm. and show his best side, his best self to... First Moxie, then all of his other teammates, like, yeah, hydrating Millie in the battle and, yeah, gushing over Luna and even Stolas at the end there. Like, yeah, how they're going to go home and have a night of passion that Blitz is actually openly encouraging for once. And speaking of which, how about Stolas? Oh, God, I love, ow, the, I love everything about the demonic possession. Yeah. I love everything about the whole thing about, like, Stolas just coming out as, like, a gigantic monstrous owl beast. And it's just, like, oh, my God, is this, like, part of, like, the whole Galatia's, like, ability and such? Because, like, we basically get, like, to see that, like, in this first episode of season two about for, like, Stolas' dad. And, but then to just yeah. see that, it's just, like, oh, my God. God, it just is I like, am starting oh, to I wonder so what Stolas' dad looks like angry, and I don't want to know because <laughs> I already know what Stolas is looking like angry, so I'm like, I want to know. I really need to know this. <laughs> I want to know, and then I can regret, and then I can, re and then I can regret the nightmare fuel afterwards. Yeah, yeah I kind of want to see point. Stolas versus his dad because, like, yeah, if they come in opposition with each other, I kind of want to see what amazing demonic imagery they both would pull out on each other. I, I agree. Oh. I want, I want that on the menu. I, I want oh that. Oh my god! I want this ninja. He's been oh, around oh, a little bit here. Oh my <laughs> devil! <laughs> well, I think it's easy, like. The last two episodes are generally, I think we all agree, to like the two best of the season. Mm -hmm. um, the exception of Jen but, uh, and Day Lover, depending on which episode mm -hmm. it is. But yeah, they, they're top two for a reason. This was oh, this was not close. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to say is like, well, I think this one is stronger than the finale. The finale is sort of like a setup for a payoff we haven't really had yet. Mm -hmm. um, but this one is a standalone episode that like this sort of like it, it like completes what it is and it also sort of develops both stole it develops pretty much all the characters involved besides maybe luna but even she sort of has some like mm -hmm. being protected small, over great her, action her, like yeah, i think like this moment. is the best well i mean like we kind of see a little more like, i mean this actually has at least one of the most telling moments of her relationship with blitz that yeah when he demand he yells at her to close the portal like yeah she not only knows when he's serious, but takes seriously when he's serious. Like, she knows that that means that, okay, this is uh, not a joke anymore. Right. And on some level, up to now, it always was, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is just and, like, whoa. <laughs> and where I think, like, this is, the one of, uh, this is the one of the one... Uh, of the few episodes where the violence actually feel great like it feels right or how to say that yeah well i mean like, like the i think luna fighting people I, in, in oh, yeah like that yeah her actions <laughs> bits were amazing too but i think like why that works so well is because yeah like they said that conversation between moxie and blitz like okay that is a huge huge triumph for them that is completed on a very very quiet note i mean and it's almost like playing you like a piano because after it yeah completes the triumph itself on a quiet note it gives us this loud explosive victory lap as it were that just yeah is exploding all over the screen in the best ways with blitz taking this moral he's learned even to make this victory lap even better. Nice. Fantastic. Right, but, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, I guess we have to sort of wrap up. So yeah, that's our. Oh. That's all. So we really like hell of a boss. Season. Oh, hell, absolutely. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, on to season two. And then also yeah. back to season one, maybe. Yeah, it's hoping amazing. we get to see the actual finale soon, you know, because yeah. you were getting pretty darn good there at the end, especially. It might be a yeah, number it, one. Who knows? Just give I it mean, to us, please. It might, Shit, it might bring back a fan favorite busy pop like animation and bring it to the <laughs> forefront for their own series. And I'm just be like, I'm so happy that I actually got to see this in a oh, long time no. now. I just yeah. thought of something they might be doing. Oh. Releasing it after season two's ending. There's a lot of yeah. ways they could go with that. My theory yeah. so far is that the quote unquote, okay, it's not going to be important to see. You don't need to see it to see season two is actually means you don't need it to see season two yet. That the uh, episode yeah. picking up with Stoll is off to the side just means that he wasn't involved in this finale we haven't gotten to see yet very much but yeah this is his him picking up the pieces in the meantime while blix is doing part two of coming home and collapsing on his couch in tears right yeah, excited but, well, uh, yeah, looking forward to it and to watching it with all of you yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's gonna be right. hella good. <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll, good. Definitely be, it'll definitely be the bomb, and hopefully we might actually get some Millie character development. Because oh, it's yeah. even more or than Luna. Luna. Uh, or some good Luna. Yeah, all a little bit. Oh, we need to see Millie win a one-on-one fight on screen too. She has, I think, she's only had two one-on-ones. I mean, individual dorks do not count as one-on-ones, but yeah, only two one-on-ones, and she's lost them both. So we need some more payoff to how badass she is. No, she's working together with Luna, yeah. Yeah. Millie versus Ozzy might count, but that wasn't much of a fight. Yeah, that was just a surprise attack. Yeah. It could be fun. Either either way, I'm I'm all for more Millie, more Millie fights. Yeah, yeah. And more all of them fights for that matter. We might just be two uh, Middle East instead, Jen. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> but also but, more, more yeah. love songs, but more love songs to Moxie for Millie. I, I eat that up. I, eat oh, that. I agree with that. Yes. Yeah, let's just focus on like it a, could also be interesting with a uh, with a love song from. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to. What? All right, but uh, I guess uh, see y'all next time. Yay! Until then. Bye bye.